The outrage continues over the alleged thrill kill murder of Christopher Lane, gunned down, as police say, because the suspects were simply bored. And there are new details tonight that one of the accused posted images online showing them posing with guns and money. The horrific crime has sparked a heated debate. Glenn Beck says that race is a factor in how it's being reported. There's something missing here. Can you tell me what that is? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what that is? What's missing in this story? And they do it every time. Do it every time. Every time. So you almost are guaranteed that if the race isn't mentioned in a story like this, it's because they're it's black. black. We've been now Charles Blobin, New York Times columnist and CNN political commentator and CNN contributor and host of the Ben Ferguson Show. Ben Ferguson, welcome to both of you. Ben Ferguson, let me start with you. What is the issue here? Is it that because two of the three alleged killers here uh, were black, therefore it must be a race crime? Hard questions. Why do I have to? Because Online, and we found from some of these tweets, which was that he said he didn't like white people and he was planning on going out and killing people. And, and that would be what many would say is a hate crime. And if we have hate crime legislation, then it should be used appropriately when someone goes out to kill someone of another race based on their race and at least for one of these young men there was a motivation there through his own words not through speculation that he did not like anyone that was white and we see this also happen with a lot of gang initiations in this country where a lot of gang members who happen to be of one race will go out and purposely attack someone of another race and and if yeah, you're going to have on, hate crime legislation you should do that ben. But Ben, you are missing one key ingredient in this story, aren't you? One of the three was white. So how does that work with your, this is a one-race gang? I just said, gang. I just said one at of the least gang is one. White. I said yeah, at but least if one, one of them is white, can it legitimately... By race? Right, but, well, yes, but is there actual evidence that he set out deliberately to kill a white person? I think there's a lot of evidence if you look at what he said in his own words online. I've not seen anything I'm that says that. To here. I've seen, well, you I've should, seen you him. You should look at it because it said he doesn't like white people and they're creepy. That's one of the I've read multiple it. quotes I've read it. What I haven't read, What I haven't read is the inference you're putting on this that he set out to deliberately kill a white person because that's not what it says. Charles Blow. Let me bring you in here. I mean, there is an argument, and you know what the argument is. It's the one Glenn Beck and others have put forward today, that the media deliberately underplayed this story of the Australian student, which I think is ridiculous because we led on it, for example, on the night that it happened. But they underplayed it simply because he was white and two of the killers, alleged killers, were black. What is your reaction? Well, first, the idea that the media does not include people like Glenn Beck is ridiculous. I think that we often get caught up in this idea that the media is somehow separate and apart from people in one persuasion, and you, the media becomes everybody who doesn't agree with them. The, I have heard quite a bit about this story. I think that most people are saddened by this story, that people, you know, that we, uh, our hearts go out to, to the young man who was killed, his family, and his loved ones. And, but I think when you, you know, when we try to figure out what is in a person's state of mind at the point that a crime is, is, happens, uh, it gets tricky because we don't know. Uh, what, what we know about bias is that it is not always constant and it has to be present at the time of the crime. Um, and what we'll have to do is to see when, when we go to trial if, if we, they can suss out whether or not uh, the, the bias was, pre was present at the time of the crime. It does not bode well, I will agree, however, that he is, that, that at least one of the people who is suspected of committing this crime uh, has articulated that he has these sorts of biases. That is a, that is right, not right, part but of the see, record, right? see, Ben, ben, ben no, Ferguson, here's, here's the point I would make. Ben, let me just say to you, okay. if it turns out that there is concrete evidence that one or two of the black suspects here deliberately targeted a young white man to assassinate, then I will be the first to say this is absolutely disgusting and outrageous, as I've been saying since I first heard about this case anyway. I don't understand why there has to be this sort of ludicrous uh, in-media squabbling over this I, kind I of issue, think, when here's, here's obviously a, we're a, all outraged by it. But let me, let me say this, Piers. You, the prime example of what I'm talking about, what I think there is a double standard when we're dealing with issues of race, is how much caution we just showed towards these young men, but we did not show towards George Zimmerman 
when there was a circumstance where there was actually an altercation. This was just absolute, cold-blooded, vicious, evil murder. But when there was another situation with altercation, none of this caution ben, and this calm you. that we just witnessed was no longer wasn't there with that case. And that is the double standard when there are two different races and two crimes committed by two different races. I think that I think I don't agree with that. To, and I, I think there has been there's uh, been universal outrage. I think, I and you think mentioned it's George to Zimmerman. Me Here's what I'm also outraged by. Let's look at this. This is George Zimmerman uh, today down at the gun store. He's after new guns. He also a tactical shotgun. There he, he is. He, smiling he was, away. He's a free. You, but Charles see, this Logan. is my point. I, mean, I still want to convict him. Hold on. Utterly, hold on. Here's wait the a minute, thing. Ben still, Ferguson. Pierce. Wait a minute, Ben. You, Let Charles Blow have the first say. I'll come back to you afterwards. Charles Blow, I find this offensive. I don't want to see George Zimmerman smiling in a gun store as he's preparing to buy more guns. Right. I, I, well, first, I want to go back and say I think that trying to draw direct parallels between the Trayvon Martin case and this case is actually a disgusting kind of attack uh, to take. I think that those are two separate cases with two very different sets of circumstances. And in fact, what this particular case shows us is how the, 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 gov the, the system of justice is actually supposed to work and how people thought that it would have worked in the Trayvon Martin case as well, that some, something really horrible happens and we figure out who did it and we immediately take those people into custody and we, on Tuesday, they had a charge, and you set a, a court date, and you say that we're going to let the justice system figure out what the facts are. That is not what happened in the Trayvon Martin case. It is a very well, different the, set the, of the, circumstances. The I'm sorry, I let on. you speak. I let the you justice. speak. No, I will not give the time. I let you speak. What I'm telling you is <laughs> these are very different cases and what if this if the if the Trayvon Martin situation had actually happened in the same way that this case happened you would have had no outrage but the fact that they were so but different, it didn't happen that way it all what right, didn't now happen? I'm gonna respond okay please when, do when you look at the difference in these two cases and this is where you're having a very selective memory because you think George Zimmerman is guilty still even though a jury of his peers found him innocent and you still don't want to treat him as you, a free you know innocent what I think? man now let me finish. You, Let me finish. It, you know what I okay? think? You can't Let tell me, me what I think. Let I'm me sorry. finish. You, hold on. No, I'm not going to let I'm you finish, finish telling me what I think. I'm going to finish the same way that you would not. All right. Now, let me finish. Go for My it. My point is this. Tell the truth. There was a justice system. You just didn't like how it worked. How do you, you know that? You didn't like the police and how they investigated it. You didn't like the outcome. They didn't charge him with a crime. And so, therefore, you decided that as an American who wasn't there that night, who didn't investigate it, that you would be against George Zimmerman, even though there was, in fact, people that were doing their job. You just didn't like how they did their job. No. There's a big so difference in these two instances You were not in Oklahoma. Here. You were not in Oklahoma, and you were making a judgment about what's in the minds of people who were there, and you absolutely do not know that. So the fact that you're being such a hypocrite about this is actually outrageous. I, the second, I'm not. The second thing, the second thing is, the second thing is, the second thing is, gentlemen, I have to, I have to end it there. <laughs> what I would say, though, is surely the common theme, surely, is that in both cases, we don't actually know for sure either way if there was any racial intent. Pierce, and I'm glad you had me on with a clarifying tonight. Thank you. <laughs> well, as always, gentlemen. It's